Hi, and welcome all to the CAA show. My name is Jaggi Masi. CAA is, of course, conversations and analysis. Today, I wonder at how the mighty morality keepers and conscience upholders of a country have fallen. I watched a few debates yesterday about the proposed Uttar Pradesh population draft bill on a two-child policy. And I could not simply believe what I heard on those shows. Let me take one debate in particular. I will tell you more about it in a minute, but let me acquaint all of you with the dramatis personae of the show. Ms. Barkadat moderated the show. Then there was Poonam Mutraj of the PFI, Radhika Ramasheshan of the Business Standard, Yamini Ayer of CPR, all of them leading liberal lights with a strong distaste and dislike for the Modi government. And then there was Mr. Gurcharandas, ex-corporate honcho, also an economist and, if I may say so, weather in opinion disseminator who supported the liberals on this issue all the way. For some tepid Sarkari resistance to the liberal secular argument, there was also Ms. Anila Singh, spokesperson of the BJP on the show. The gist of the arguments that the Liberals made was that the proposed bill would be a disaster. It was just a political stunt introduced six months before the elections in UP and that it would adversely impact the reproductive autonomy of the poorest of the poor women, deny them choice, and that the impact of the disincentives in the bill would be more powerfully felt rather than the incentives. It was also argued that the bill was a camouflage and a way out by the BJP RSS combined to whitewash the dismal record of the Yogi government during the pandemic and failure to generate meaningful employment in the state. It was argued that the bill was bound to generate popularity among the middle and the upper classes that would favor Yogi in the upcoming elections. The bill would push the poorest of the poor in a corner, forcing them to resort to abortion and other unsavory health practices. It was also darkly hinted that the bill would be coercive and with the debater's knowledge of Yogi, the disincentives would be ruthlessly imposed and the incentives would hardly have any impact. The worst practices of the Sanjay Gandhi era, including forced sterilizations were conjured up. The fertility rate was declining. So what was the need to introduce this bill? The liberals argue. Mr. Gusharan Das wholeheartedly supported these arguments, adding his own, that we need to learn from history. The one child policy in China had failed and population dividend was the only way forward. I have given you a, in a bit of a detail, the summary of what was said in this discussion. By the way, I call it discussion because it was actually a one-sided debate because mark my words, all these arguments will become the template for the secular liberal opposition to this bill in the coming days. I will also not be surprised if an agitation launched by the opposition against the proposed bill starts very soon. But the more important thing is to decode the liberal secular arguments about the bill and really understand what we are talking about or rather, what all to expect to happen in the coming months. Firstly, let me say that all these leading lights of the secular community deliberately and with full intention did not utter a word what this bill really intends to do. To my mind, this bill is a decisive attack against patriarchy that compels women in all strata of life but especially in the poorest of the poor, to become reproductive machines that are forced to produce children after children. The simple reason for this is that either the man is looking for a male heir or the community made up of, of male elders in tandem with a woman's mother-in-law determines that the fertile woman has to reproduce more and more. This is the hideous reality deep down and the proposed bill precisely seeks to attack the patriarchal community diktat 
in all communities, including both the Muslim and the Hindu communities. The way the proposed bill does that is that it disincentivizes subsidies, tax rebates, promotions in government jobs, and tickets to local body elections. Now think for a moment. Is it men or women who are employed in government jobs and are office holders in public? Got it? Yes, the proposed bill is designed to hit the man and the patriarchal system, which forces women into more and more childbirths. It is the men who stand to lose more if they have more than two children. And what for me is truly shocking is that the liberal secularists have rubbished this bill and that the famous status quo ante demanding that such a proposed bill be scrapped. These people know fully well that most of these women crushed under the patriarchal order have no choice over their bodies and are forced to become childbearing machines to satisfy aspirations of men in their family and community. The argument that Gucharan Das made about the China uh, failing in its one-child policy is also completely flawed. It is largely to the one-child policy that China has made great economic strides and increased its per capita income dramatically. Now, after achieving a certain level of prosperity, they can afford to scrap the one child norm. The seculars advance the argument that the proposed bill's real purpose is to control childbirth in the Muslim community and in the same breath point out that the fertility rates of Muslims have fallen drastically. You could well ask, why this selective concern for the Muslim community? After all, the scourge of poverty affects all communities. The real reason is that the seculars want the minority Muslim community to stay in its silo, remain ghettoized forever and trapped in a well of prejudice, religious bigotry, poor education, clinging to its patriarchal identity. They will, of course, never say all this in words, but it suits them that the minority community retains its poor me tag, because only then the liberals can come to their rescue, play savior, and take up cudgels on their behalf against right-wing forces. It is an old, old game which they love and cannot do without. And the politicians join the seculars in this double entrande, because of a community were to break off its shackles and emerge enlightened, what would happen to their ready-made vote banks so useful in elections? Wasted interest rather than any kind of empathy is the driving force behind opposition to the proposed bill. I find it remarkable uh, parallels between the secular opposition to this proposed bill and the earlier triple talaq bill, which became a law. Both bills are an onslaught against patriarchy. And no wonder the secularists were dead set against the previous legislation and their attitude is the same against the draft version of the new one. The secularists advance all manner of devious arguments about fertility rates, election time, opportunism, etc., to oppose the proposed bill. In reality, their real opposition is to the Modi-Yogi combined. Even the most progressive legislation in the world piloted by the present government will never pass muster by the slot. So it would be best to ignore them and socially engineer and break down patriarchal behavior to genuinely empower women and not merely give them lip sympathy as the seculars have been doing over the decades. So that's all for today. Goodbye. And subscribe to this channel if you like it. Subscription is, of course, free of cost.